calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's mob time. Don't tune in, cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all, and welcome to the Blurred Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I'm your host, Foop, joined by my two co-hosts, Antoine and Ryan. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you stay alchemists or watching us on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn those bell notifications for future uploads, and engage with us in the comments to let us know what you thought about, thought about this recording. All right, all right. Says Ron has stated, we are here to tell you guys that we finally watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, the 2009 version, not the 2003 version. And we are just here to share our thoughts on how we felt about the series, the characters, the power system, and all that jazz. So like Ryan said below, if you have watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, let us know how you felt about our review. If you haven't watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, hopefully, maybe this video will convince you to watch it. But then also, why are you here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they on the edge of their seat and they like, yeah. um, I don't know but, yet. But, don't but, know. but we're going to... But we're going to be forming this conversation. I only say that because we're going to be forming this conversation as a mob review. So if mm-hmm. this is your first time or isn't your first time here, please know that our mob reviews are spoiler filled. So we will be spoiling Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, whether you have watched in full halfway through, got one more episode left. I highly suggest you hit pause on this video. Go finish Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and come back and listen to the discussion. Uh, I'm sorry. At some point when a pro- platform or, I mean, not a platform, an IP, a show, a book or something has been out for an X amount of time, we don't even got to do spoiler warnings. You you, you probably already been spoiled about Full Metal by at this, this point. Yeah, at this point, yeah. At I, this I, point. I, that's, I, that's I, like but, saying, but, but, hey, but, but, I don't want you to real. know what happened to Daenerys in Game of Thrones. Like, come on now. You but told me, me you ain't heard though. it. Up. But let me be real, though. Before I watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, the only thing that I had been seeing is the show Tucker situation. I had, like everything else as far as Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, I had never seen until I watched the anime. But I knew about the show Tucker situation based on social media. Man, Roy Mustang has been all over social media for so long. Him and that lust scene. That's been I, a I've never seen it for years. Really? I've never seen it. I've, I swear, really? I've never seen it until I watched the anime. The only thing mm-hmm. that I saw pre watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is the show Tucker situation. I swear. I mm. didn't start seeing more Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood content until I was actively watching it. And then it was starting to come up in my algorithm on Twitter mm-hmm. and TikTok and stuff like that. It'd be like that. I did see that Roy Mustang one, though. That, uh, I've that seen that every. I just didn't know what they was doing for real, and so I, so I, I, I had never seen it until I watched the anime. So I feel what you're saying. Like it came out in 2009. Mm-hmm. So, but in the situation for people who are watching, who were like me, who only saw specific situations, or I saw a small piece of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood content, that is who that warning was for. Mm-hmm. So even if you saw a couple clips on Twitter and you just don't know the context. Still. Well, while we get started on this episode, we always let the manga readers know, but for the anime watchers, for the folks who have told us, newer anime fans and older anime fans, hey, go back and watch Full Metal. Y'all was right. I see why it's y'all top 10. I see it's, it's why it's been on the top of my anime list for so many it's years. Good. It, it, it we get definitely it. solidified itself into my top 10 anime. No, definitely. We get it. In 64 episodes. In 64 yeah. Yeah, episodes. Really? There are a few of an- few anime in my top 10 go way past 64. Go way past 64. Mm-hmm. It, I feel like it's it was real, well executed within a short, we're a short mm-hmm. time frame. Short yeah. span, you know. Kept me on the edge of my seat. Shout out to Ron because he was definitely right. Like once you get past that episode 10 mark, cause like the first 10 episodes of them setting the stage, getting you to learn about alchemy, getting you in tune with the characters, et cetera, et cetera. But once you get past that episode 10 mark, the story goes, 
and it goes. Mm-hmm. And I love that even though they, you know, the episode count is lower than um, some of the anime series that I have watched. Like, I guess, like, especially old from generation. that time period. Right. Yeah. That's what I want to say. From anime from that time period, mm-hmm. they did a very good job on explaining the power system, the history, how everything ties together. And sometimes you don't get that. Sometimes you do not get that. But they yeah. definitely took the time to put all of that together. And and it's like, just from high level, just high level stuff, I feel like the characters didn't really fall into too many tropes. Like, usually Battle Shonen's especially really put, like, their main MC into a certain, like, you're the Goku trope slash Naruto One Piece Luffy uh-huh. trope where you're dumb and strong mm-hmm. or you're just miserable and everything else. Like, Eric or Eric Ulrich and his brother definitely were very unique MCs. The ending was fantastic. Everybody's talking about yeah. NHA's ending and JJK's ending. This ending was very well executed. Mm-hmm. The supporting cast was fire. Yes. The villain slash villain group Yes. absolutely fire and well executed like i can't complain like if y'all want us to complain about this anime you hate full metal alchemist you ain't getting that from me this episode yeah no you ain't I, was, I was a bit worried you're in the not. beginning i was like oh it seems like it's gonna be real short. it started slow it's gonna be real short you know the enemies i was like i don't know it seemed like they're gonna have one villain group but the villain group like you just said they nice. were fire they were the, nice the twist the twist on the on the villain group the twist on Hohenheim, his so I guess I feel like the whole series was just like full of twists because I was like, okay, you're evil. Oh wait, mm-hmm. he's not evil. You're mm-hmm. evil. Oh wait, <laughs> you're not evil. Why y'all look alike? Wait a minute. <laughs> I was like the the way that they set everything up and and as far as like with them revealing certain details mm-hmm. was executed in my opinion perfectly. The way that certain situations were built up, the way certain situations were elevated, it wasn't just like, okay, that escalated pretty fast. It was like, no, this Mm -hmm. is a gradual, like, this is a gradual rolling snowball Mm -hmm. where every piece that gets picked up by this rolling snowball is, like, crafted and put in this snowball in a specific piece to get Mm -hmm. to the end. And it got worse and worse. Like, (laughs) it got to the point where I was Mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. How are they going to win? I hope this ending ain't no just, oh, something just popped out of thin air. Like, it actually made sense and stayed true to the power system. Yes, because that definitely made me nervous when we got to the part where Father had, like, did unlock the, like, the door of God or whatever that, they, whatever it turned, the earth turned to that big ass door <laughs> and that, that eye eyeball came out and I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. now we have went into, like, the supernatural stuff and I was like, okay, the only anime that I've seen like step like take a step that high is Naruto with the aliens and shit. And then it was like, okay, how are y'all gonna come back down from this? Mm-hmm. And, and they, they didn't did, do they, a good job. They did. Naruto, Naruto didn't did. do a good job. <laughs> Full yeah. Metal Alchemist did a good brought job. it back in. They definitely brought it back in into the lore and everything that we had learned up to that point. So it was like, okay. This makes sense. Don't have to learn anything different. Don't have to understand a completely new, different power system or understand this new level of uh, alchemy, in Naruto's case, chakra, that explains why this is happening. Everything that we've Mm -hmm. learned up to this point is applying to this situation. And it's just the way that they tied alchemy into it. Like, I'm not much of a sci-fi fan, but the way that alchemy, like, they explained it, but they didn't really, like, just say, like, oh, where does this energy originate from? Does it originate yeah. from your soul? Mm-hmm. And, but then they start saying it comes from like the tectonic plates. Yeah. Then they throw in alka history and how it's tied right. to science. I it stayed really freaking balanced. Yeah. You know I what like, I mean? Like, like through the entire series, like I was like, I really want to, ex- I really want to know how it works because when they really got into the alka um, history and all of that type of stuff, and I was like, well, if it's different for you guys, how is it really working for, you know, the um Eric and the rest of them folks over there? Like how, mm-hmm. how are, where is their alchemy really coming from? And I was like, I'm really waiting on the edge of my seat for this ex- explanation. And I think it was, the entire I, I think it was time. nice, it, it was nice yeah. the way they did it. I was like, okay, okay, that's cool. And, and, and the soundtrack was fire. Did y'all realize that? They did have some good, um... Okay, the, yeah. the intros, the intro. <laughs> the it, was oh, one, I, it was one intro where I was like, okay, and so we're gonna have to skip this one. <laughs> yeah. But like, it, it was one intro. I was like, okay, y'all gonna have to skip this one. But the rest of it, nice it's in the high intensity the soundtrack in the high intensity moments the reason why i like this so much because it reminded me of like 
Inuasha. And when I was doing my research for this, the last season, I believe the last season of Inuasha was airing at the same time Full Metal Atlas Brotherhood was airing as well. And I was like, this is really giving me like Inuasha type, the way that they're structuring this music. And I was like, I like this. See, I ain't watching Inuyasha, but Akira Senju, I think that's the author. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm not much of an intros and outros person, but that symphonic music that they were using the transitions, I think one of them was March of the Moving Dolls, the other was Crisis in the North, and the next one was the Intrapid. I added mm-hmm. those to my anime soundtrack playlist instantly because I loved that symphonic sound. It was really dark, a lot of bass, the way they used the trumpets, it just sounded amazing. It played well with the anime. It definitely did. Exactly. Definitely enhanced those high intensity moments. Mm-hmm. Definitely made you like when they get got to like the heart to heart situations, it definitely made you feel for certain characters and certain situations. Mm-hmm. Like the whole thing just really like pulls you in. Yeah, exactly. And then the animation, like Ryan said this a couple episodes ago, but the animation definitely still holds up like sometimes you can watch anime from old generation anime and it's like okay this definitely looks like something that you know released in that time period but full metal alchemist like the bright colors the way that they animated everybody's like alchemy and um the action scenes and everything i was like yeah this Mm -hmm. i know i'm watching an anime from 2009 but this feels like everything that i'm watching like yeah. just just in that midpoint, like we we have those who've like pushed the scale, mm-hmm. and then we have some that are like right in the middle. And I was like, Full Metal Alchemist still falls in this middle tier of like animation alongside with everything else. Yeah, I can. I, yeah, I didn't and, mind it at all throughout watching it. And funny enough, when you think about that, you think about reboots. It's the fact I don't know too much of the history, but Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood's reboot came right after the original series aired, mm-hmm. and it didn't stay true to the manga it pulled a soul eater it pulled a it pulled a comic got killed it did what a lot of those animes did and some reason they greenlit the studio nowadays folks are clown on you on social media they'll be like this anime was so bad they got to do a reboot immediately but the reboot was so successful mm-hmm. like this reboot stayed true to the manga Honestly. and it made me want to buy the manga well i and did and buying it i wonder if that kind of pushback came with the reboot like even though social media is not as influential and not as in your face as it is today social media still existed so i wonder if they still had some level of pushback of coming straight after that it just wouldn't it just wasn't as intense as it could have been had full metal alchemist did the first run in like the early uh, the late 2010s, early 2020s, and Dan was like, okay, we finna do a reboot. We messed this up so bad, we finna do a reboot. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, because was it this Brotherhood came out in 2009, right? That's the yeah. year? Yeah. So we talking early Instagram, early Twitter, back when... Facebook, like I mean, Facebook, Facebook was still was there. Early Facebook, yeah. early my, Facebook. MySpace was still going on. Like, they mm-hmm. had no, social... Now, I'm saying, like, social media still existed, but also, the point that I was making is that it's not as easily accessible or all in your face as it is now it makes me question what the manga sales are looking like because back then that was still in the age when anime was mostly used as a marketing tool for manga Mm -hmm. versus its own little project that can actually generate millions and millions of dollars so i'm assuming i want to know where i think the pushback probably came from japan like that was around the transition when Japan really started to pay attention to American audiences and what we were desiring. Mm-hmm. But I wonder, like, was sales are bad reflection? Were they like this ain't do what it had to do because the manga sold so well? I I would like to see what led to this decision because it was a good decision at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I definitely agree. Like that, the way that like I won't say social media would have ripped them apart, but there probably would have been some heavy discourse on social media had that situation happen right now. Look, it plays into why um, fans like me, we be saying, bro, stick to the manga. Y'all ain't got to do like American comics. When y'all make an anime, keep that anime adaptation. Add, do not remove. Always mm-hmm. add, do not remove. Yeah, Stay know, true. They like to Americanize things. And they flop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but let's get more into the characters. So we talked about Edward and we talked about the supporting cast, but we really didn't get too much in depth with it. So I guess we can start with like a simple question and grow bigger. What were the standout characters to you guys in this series? Roy Mustang well, of number course, one. Roy. Roy um, Mustang number one. If you were. 
You like uh, the fewer? I do. Hey, fewer Bradley. Hey, mm-hmm. look, listen, <laughs> listen. When it got to the end, and He's um, that guy. they they were taking they were taking over Central, and I was like, I I was like, this is so crazy because Bradley is about to show up. Like everything that's going down is crazy. Like the Armstrong siblings are fighting sloth. Like there's so many pieces moving, so many people fighting. And I was like, all of this is happening. And he just calls. Bre- <laughs> no, all, I was like, oh, yes, he calls. But I was like, all of this is happening. He had and Bradley hasn't even shown back up yet. Mm-hmm. So then there's a scene. So me and Antoine are watching. He had already finished, but you know he was just being a good friend and watching the end of it with me. So there's a scene where Alphonse is with, um. Those Camara guys who mm. used to work for um, what's his name? Father. And, no. Oh no, not father. The um, old dude who had that who had his own philosopher's stone and using that red yeah, light. Was, yeah, yeah, had yeah, yeah. the thing in his hand. I forgot his name. Sorry, but um, they're arguing. Um, Kim- Kimberly. 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 Yeah. There you go. They're arguing by this by this car because they done ran it off the road, and you just see Bradley like swiftly walking in the background. Ooh. And Antoine was like, you see him walking, right? And I had to rewind. I was like, he didn't even stop. He didn't even stop to see what y'all, like, y'all are obviously his ops, but he didn't even stop to address y'all. He just kept walking in the middle of the street. That man was on a mission. A mission, because y'all playing in my town. Out of all of... My city. My city, y'all playing around in my city. Yeah. Right. Out of all of the uh, sins in the Ouroboros gang, he's my favorite. He is he if, is my favorite. If I'm looking at them out of his group of folks, I, I would say I like Greed. Honestly, I loved Ling yeah. and Greed's relationship. Yeah. They are good. probably like my second favorite character. Them together is like my mm-hmm. second favorite character as one unit after Roy. Also like Izumi Curtis. Teacher, she fired. I just like we can see her most of the funny. Teacher, she, she gets to me every time she comes and causes some shit. They be like, "Who are you? I'm a housewife." <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl. I was like, "Okay, period." She be having her house slippers on, handling business. I be like, "Period." She's a housewife. One of the coldest folks there, which is funny. Like out of all the alchemists, she top seven in yeah. terms of strength and She's ability. Cold. She easily top seven. I I fuck with Reza Hawkeye. I said one thing about Reza Hawkeye: she gonna have a gun. She gonna have a few. Mm-hmm. I thought that was going to be your favorite. That's your character archetype right there that you like. Mm-hmm. Rizzo, Rizzo Hawkeye, Olivier is nice. Olivier, it's a lot of good characters, honestly. It was a Olivier lot of, I, like, every, like, every character they introduced, like, they built them up in a way, and I was like, I, I'm not even mad. Like, when Scar got introduced as the villain, but then you start to see more, like, even when he showed up as the villain, and I was like, I, I don't really, like, dislike you for real. Yeah. And then when we start going more into his backstory and everything, like the reason why he's like, they gave him layers. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. One that I was kind of disappointed in because I wanted to like him more was Kimberly. I I feel like him being in the jail cell, they, they built him up a lot. And he was okay, but I just, I wanted more, I guess. I mean, he had that fight scene against uh, Alphonse. And uh, Alphonse that, and that, yeah. Yeah, that was about, that was really it. That, and he, I feel like he got out. I I feel like he kind of got outshined because of all of the villains. Yeah, but he was still he was still fire. But like when you yeah. by that point when we got to see more of Kimberly, we had Pride and Pride right. over here hitting on Alphonse's helmet, and you finding out he's sending out he more code signals. Right. I'm like yo, because I looked at it, I was like Alphonse, tell him to stop. I don't know why, but so like, me, it's like tell that kid to in the corner. Should have kicked him. No, for real. I would have got my head back. I love Alphonse to death, but like sometimes I I love that he loves to find the good in some people, or he just feels like you know some people are harmless and certain he certain states. But I was like, why do you just have willingly have him with your head? Exactly. Like, like I under, like I understand you feel real comfortable that y'all locked in this dome, but like any piece of like ways for him to communicate or anything should be gone. Like he mm-hmm. should not have the ability to do nothing. Yeah. And then when he started banging on, I was like, he's sending a message. Cause at first I was like, okay, he just whacking it. But then he kept whacking. He kept it. doing it for as long he as he kept, was doing. He kept doing. I was like, oh, this man is sending a signal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I and I would say, as smart as the Elric brothers are, I think I was a tad bit disappointed that Alphonse didn't figure that out. 
that he was yeah. just so confident I, that he had pride locked up in that in that dome. I will say I do like how they did show that they were still children. Like throughout the um, yeah. entire series, yeah. you could see like yeah, they they kids, they they kids for real. And I, I like how they brought that out. Even like in the most serious moments, they were so unserious. Yeah. And I said, Any, sure anytime, anytime they call Edward short, he couldn't. We in the most serious situation ever. You short, pip sweet. You not gonna be tall. He just cuts up. <laughs> and I honestly, I feel like what really sealed the deal was like at the end when Roy said, "I'm gonna use this philosopher's stone to get my eyes back," and he was like, "Oh, they would disapprove because Eric still ain't got his leg." And that's what blew my mind, because I'm like, yeah, just use the Philosopher's Stone, but it lets you realize how pure of heart children can be, especially once mm-hmm. they commit to something. And I was like, that's true to character. It ain't yeah. me. It's, I'm not the one in the show, but it's true to their characters. I'll let them have it. Yeah. Yeah. I think Edward's thing was he just wanted his brother to get his body back. And as soon as that happened, it was like everything else that came out of that, I, I really don't care. Like, yeah, he got his arm back, but like in the in the... In the moment, he got his arm back. Like, it wasn't his choice to get his arm back. But, like, once his brother got his body back, it's like, whatever. Like, he gave up his alchemy for it. So, at that mm-hmm. point, like, I definitely felt like he was at peace. He don't care that he had this leg. He, I feel like if the arm situation didn't happen, I don't think he would have cared too much about his arm. Honestly. that's another, And that's another thing in terms of theories, because there's no sequel. And I doubt a sequel is coming. All right. But he lost his alchemy. Does that simply mean he needs to study the science and gain it back? Because when they talk about law of equivalent exchange and the energy comes from the Earth's tectonic plates, while our history came from like what the energy that flows through the land or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With him giving up his alchemy does that just mean he forgot the information to understand it and now he got to study it and it comes back, or like he, something in his soul he I can't manipulate he still, chakra? I thought he still knew it though, because that's why mm-hmm. he was going. When he, was, like, when he was on top of the house and he tried to do it, and I, when he was like, "It ain't that's, it ain't worked that time." Yeah, because I he feel, lost his connection, his actual connection with it, right? Right. So the price for him for Alphonse getting his whole body back is that he can't use it. I don't think that he lost the knowledge or like the theories and everything behind it. But in that exchange, he gave up his ability to use it. Mm-hmm. He closed that doorway and, and blew away the doorway. And honestly. I feel like and. <laughs> I think it would be an interesting discussion if in the series we had met a character who lost their alchemy, but like in a way that's natural per se, instead of like trading with truth as mm-hmm. Edward did. And maybe we could play more around with that theory of like, it, did he lose it because he was playing around with truth? Or is it like this character situation where they lost their alchemy because of this, that, and the third? Well, that's the funny thing, because that's that's kind of what I was trying to allude to earlier when I was talking about the power system and how some parts weren't explained. I think it's a good thing that they didn't explain it because it gives those room for theories. But like it didn't seem like they played on like the innate magical power. It wasn't no key chakra or Mm -hmm. magic or anything like that. But it seemed like it literally just came from understanding. Like the way I was looking at it, anybody could be an alchemist if they studied hard and they learned the symbols. That's kind of what they led it to. And when he bargained with truth, I thought what he was giving away was his ability to simply use alchemy without circles because now he has all of the knowledge of the world, quote unquote. So I thought when he gave that away, now he just needs to revert back to using circles and maybe he doesn't remember. But I don't know because they didn't really feed much into it at the end of it. That's fair. Yeah. Because I thought all he gave up was that. And now that he's learning alka history and they're training all over the world, maybe he could learn alka history. He could get back his old alchemy, just not to the point where he just got to use his hands and he is the um, alchemist circle. Alchemist or could, circle. He, could he do it like Mei Chain? Like, could he learn their ways of doing it? Do they have the same like type of connection? That, that's what I'm thinking, because the ending just made it seem like all they're going to do now is travel to get his leg back. Because mm-hmm. Alphonse still has his full to the full degree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming Eric Edward is just going to travel around and learn alka history or something else to get his leg back. Hmm. That's fair. I, I think they left it pretty open ended on what they could do. Yeah. But in a flat. good way, though. Yeah. Like, in, a good, a in a great way. In a way yeah. that I was like, man, I wish I could see him getting his leg back. No, it ended in a way that I was like, okay, you know, whatever he does after this, you know, I'm it's, cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. You but, you fought your you fought your good fight. You fought a fight. You fought your good fight. Like when it comes to power systems, this is up there with men, in my opinion, in terms of how balanced and explainable it yeah. is. Yeah. Like the give, like the, I love when power systems have like that give and take type mm-hmm. feel to it. Like you, you're mm-hmm. just not going to be like extremely powerful with no consequences. Seems you know more realistic mm-hmm. in a way. And before exactly. I even started the show, I always was kind of interested in a way because I used to always see clips and stuff, and I was like, the alchemy. This seems like something I would be interested in. I just never sat down and actually clicked on the show. Exactly. But I, I just knew. I, I figured that like I would like the power system before I even watched it for real. Look, I think I lied on social media when I said I watched it all the way through. Like, I know I watched it back in like high school on Hulu at my dad's place. And I, when I really, when I was watching the scene, I think I made it to like episode twenty something. I just got bored and dropped it. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad I went back and watched it with fresh eyes because I was like, nah, this is a great anime. <laughs> this it is was on Toonami too, right? I think it was on Toonami. I ain't watch it there. I watched One Piece back in the day on Toonami. Yeah, I know. I don't remember if I saw it. Like, I, yeah, I remember seeing One Piece on Toonami back then. But I don't remember if I saw Full Metal Alchemist on there. Probably, but I don't remember it for real. I, I don't remember ever seeing any actual, ever sitting down and actually watching any episodes like I did, like One Piece back in the day before I even started watching it. So I don't remember. I kind of want to know, mm-hmm. actually. It makes sense for you to because that was Soul, that was soul well, Eater's generation. When did Tsunami stop, I guess? That was more. That wasn't too long ago, right? It took a it took a short pause and then came back, but it was two thousand nine, the late two thousands, and early two thousand tens. It was definitely active because that was mm-hmm. I think that was around the time that back when Attack on Titan and Sword Art released when we was in high school. That was around twenty twelve ish. So if Full Metal Alchemist was running on anything, it would have been on Toonami. Yeah. Foop looking like y'all y'all in words watch Toonami. I watch Disney Channel. <laughs> I did not watch I did not watch Disney Channel. I just stopped watching Cartoon Network when that man and, and when Tom and that spaceship came on because I was like, oh yeah, this ain't nothing I want to watch for real. <laughs> when Tom came when Tom came on that spaceship, I was like, like, oh yeah. Right, for me. I was like, oh right, yes, Tom go to bed. <laughs> and you know what's so and you know what's so crazy, Foop? Because you love Inuyasha. I used to only watch Inuyasha on Toonami. I never I only, watched it consistently, but I watched it episodically. On I there. only watched Inuyasha. I only made it to watching Toonami on Cartoon Networks when I used to go to my grandma's house, and I used to stay up all night. That's when I sat there and watched Toonami. That's so funny. You should. You could have been watching OG Naruto with us. I. Yeah. I did not. I, I didn't make it that far. In real time, mm. I did not make it that far, but. Um, going back to the supporting cast, I like Winry. As far as like female love interests go, she was there and was very like beneficial to the plot. The way that they wrote her character didn't make it seem like overbearing or like you're just here just to be here. Mm -hmm. Like we saw her and I was like, okay, you are here for romantic love interest, but your place in this story, the history that you has play in, plays into everything that was going on, especially when it came to her uh, family and how that connected to Scar and how Scar's story connected to this. And I was like, yeah, the way that you are being fit into this story like makes you stand out than other female love interests that we've seen in anime or media, period. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I like you. Yeah. I definitely agree to that. I like that they did have her own, she did have her own story and plot line. Mm -hmm. And I like that they played into their affections for one another another, because they did Mm -hmm. hit at it. When Eric was walking away, Edward was walking away and she was like, did he always have such broad shoulders? And I was like, I was like, girl, what? Not he impressed, not you looking at him a bit closer, Miss Girl. Yeah. But like when he defended from Scar and he was like, Man, what you did to her family, he's trying to keep her safe from that. I was like, that sounds like some genuine yeah, like, when, romantic when Wim, connections. When Wimmy was pulled out that ghetto scar, I was like, Wimmy, no. Wimmy, <laughs> she, she was to her. But I felt her. But the, thing, but the thing about it, I felt her 100%. Like, it didn't feel drastic to just make her be something in the plot. Like, I felt her 100%. And I definitely like that the fact that Edward came in and was like, nah, I don't want you to do this. Like, I understand your pain, but I, I don't want you to do this. Like like Ryan said, the affection throughout the series was always there. It, it did take them a bit time to realize it going towards the end, but it it was definitely 
mutual and not him just feeling affection because just to remind you, he's doing this because she's the female love interest and then he just goes back to being his regular Exactly. Character. They genuinely had a bond. And she was actually a very valuable character. Like her, what what did they call her as a metal worker? What did they call those people when they? Uh, they oh, I forgot uh, the title for. I thought it was just mechanic. He, yeah, he would just call her his mechanic. Being that's, that she that was a good true. mechanic and people recognized her skills, I was like, oh, so this ain't just something that's unique to her. It's the fact that this actually exists in the world. Mm-hmm. She's relevant. She could she's ba- she yeah. could basically be the mechanic for a whole lot of people, and she would be a valuable asset to the military. Like. She was a legitimate, valuable character to this show, and so I appreciate that. Yeah. She had she auto male mechanic. Auto male. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. And she had her own interests, like when they had brought her to um, the northern uh, fort or whatever. Like she wanted to learn about the metal and the stuff that they use um, to, you know, so they won't freeze and stuff Whatever. like that. Like she had her own interests outside of the main character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they, not, th- not, they weren't throwing her on the screen too much either. Yeah, like, not. It was, was always was, meaningful when she was on the screen. It was exactly yeah. mm-hmm. no tea, no shade, Hanada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do that. My girl, her. my girl, my girl, Winry had other interests. My girl, <laughs> Winry had other interests. Yeah, I mean, compared to most battle shown in love interests, she's easily out of my fa- out of my favorite shown, and she's easily top three. She mm-hmm. might be number one. Cause like she, I like Ori, he may and Bleach, but Winry's up there. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, as far as female love interests up, because let's even sidebar won't take too long. Let's just talk about Mikasa. Mikasa is cold as hell, but her one interest, her sole purpose so in Aaron. life, it, it's Aaron. Aaron and that crusty ass scarf and that Aaron. crusty ass scarf. <laughs> like Mikasa is cold when it comes to abilities. When it comes to like power scaling when it comes to like female characters attack on Titan, Mikasa is up there, but if you really dive deep into there's her nothing purpose, to dive into. <laughs> there's nothing to dive into. It was it, it's she's... like stepping in a puddle <laughs> with this girl. <laughs> That's it. And if you compare and when you compare it to an anime like Fairy Tale where the love interests are there, I feel like Fairy Tale don't allude to Nasu and Lucy's love the way that um Full Metal mm-hmm. does. I feel like Full Metal actually says, "All right, we're going to let this happen. We're not just going to keep hinting at it like y'all are right. teenage girls reading a rom com, and that never ends." Right, mm-hmm. and it's definitely just to go back to the fairy th- fairy tale thing. It's not a Juvia Gray thing where Juvia, yeah. where Gray finally comes around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in the spinoff series, not even in the main series, the sixty-seven volumes long. Mm-hmm. Like we get all the way to the end of the main series, and then he comes around, and now mm-hmm. we're getting into the we're getting into the spinoff. We're getting in the hundred years quest, and that was like it's blatantly there. Like yeah. real Naruto, he not again, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the last of that Naruto, the last, the last, last movie. We have to make yeah. this movie to let y'all know that they did get there, and so, we also have seven more episodes that we want you. To watch as well <laughs> and to focus and on honest, love. exactly <laughs> and honestly full metal shoot shout out to their female cast period shout Man, out to Olivier, their female cast period. Azumi, mm-hmm. shout out to Olivier Azumi Riza Hawkeye I'll give it to my girl Lust yeah, Lust. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. give it to Lust. Yeah, I'll give it to Lust. They did not downplay the on female characters, and I like that at all. At mm-hmm. all. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Look, May, May Shang, like they played May it off as she being in love with all the but, but it was cute. Yeah. It was cute the way they handled her. Yeah. She was cold in her own way, too. She was. Maria, she Maria Ross. Mad, but Maria Ross. Yep. Maria Ross. They, they did a good job. Yep. They did a great job with their female cast, and that is uncommon from Battle Shonen's. Yes. Mm. To have everybody like as far as character and abilities, like everybody is pretty much like yeah, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm not mad at I'm not mad at none of y'all mm-hmm. at all. Look. No notes, no complaints. <laughs> and very very balanced the humor. When um what was Armstrong and um Izumi's husband when they looked at each other, I was yeah. like, I seen this meme and they did the poo. Mm-hmm. Oh my sparkle. God. <laughs> yeah. His little hair curl started yeah. Yeah. I was like, that was fire. He was it like, was I nice. feel I he's like, I feel your energy. You yeah. a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> You're a good guy. <laughs> that was nice. 
Muscles. <laughs> Muscles. <laughs> It was it was it was dope though. I definitely loved the characters, and then just going back to the the villain group, I liked the, how they characterize the scenes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, I I guess what in what took it to the top for me was when they revealed who Pride was. Yeah, and I was like, not the baby, the baby, oh, yeah, the baby, up in there playing house. <laughs> That was the that was one of the biggest twists. Like that was, I was yeah. like the baby, and it was so unsuspecting. It, I was not. I had no theories towards that at all. I was not at all that boy. I was, they got. I didn't think nothing about the Fuhrer at first either. When they revealed that, I was like, "Huh?" I and, did. And, that's, and, that's, and when they revealed him to being a part of the Ouroboros, mm-hmm. I was like. One side of me was like, I feel like this is something I that should have been revealed later if he was supposed to be the big bad. But really, when it's part, really, <laughs> really, when I got to the rest of the episodes, I was like, oh, him being revealed as the Ouroboros was small work, mm-hmm. little work. Because when, when, you they, find- when you find out who Pride was, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah this tops, this tops everything I've seen so far. <laughs> They could, oh, look. Uh, the villain group could up though. Uh, the king of the the king is a part of the villain group. That's that's yeah. crazy work. That's crazy. That's and crazy he work. had so much power. And the thing that got me, and this is the part that I love too, was that it wasn't like oh the guy at the top is the bad guy and everybody's unsuspecting. His council knew what was up. Uh, other leaders that followed them knew what's up. They, like, they was just they, there. They was just there. They was like oh, okay, you orbors. Like they got the whole army in the basement they've been granted promise immortality and stuff Mm -hmm. like that and i was like when it like it was political fear at that point Mm -hmm. for full metal alchemist it wasn't Mm -hmm. just like you know big bad akoski type level this is like no this is political level fear because this man Mm -hmm. could do anything he has y'all right y'all move wrong like when he put that move pulled that move on Mustang and split it up his whole squad and had Reza, his right-hand lady, as his assistant, mm-hmm. I said, oh, yeah, he's not playing with y'all no more. Because what, what can y'all do about that? And I was you like, move, oh, yeah. You yeah. move wrong. You breathe wrong. You let the wrong person over here a conversation. Like, it was to the point that Hawkeye had to start speaking in, I mean, not Hawkeye, Mustang had to start speaking in code. Mm-hmm. He, you know, doing out, like, he, that, conversation he was having with that flower lady where he bought all them bouquet of flowers but the, mm-hmm. he just only wanted a little piece at first i didn't know what that was what was going on either i was like who get why you get flowers yeah. right but the way yeah. they had to move so secretly i was like oh yeah yeah it got to that point where i was like how are they how are they gonna win for real because <laughs> they they had to really take a step back once they realized who all the villains were the boys had to take mm-hmm. a step back they was like we need to regroup we need to rethink how, how are we gonna approach this because we can't just go in charging yeah, it's, it's just the fact that Envy moving up in there, going up through an elevator. Like once they showed that they had a whole elevator underground towards the yeah. end. <laughs> in the beginning, you wondering how Mace Hughes got murdered, but then you figure out, okay, Envy can transform, make sense. No, these folks got an elevator that takes them. That's how Lust walking in at every That's single moment. Lust- like, oh, you you found out about our secret, didn't you? Like, girl, where you come from? How'd you, how'd you get in here? The the villain layer is in the basement. <laughs> We've been we've been operating over the villain layer the whole time. That is top tier writing. We look at everywhere. That is top, that is top. We're looking they everywhere already, but the basement. In the home. They already they, infiltrated. <laughs> I was like, in in the villain layer being in the basement, did it, it shook me? But what shook me for real was them them bodies, them mm-hmm. un uh conscious. Homunculi in the basement. Mm-hmm. I was like, y'all have to be kidding me. They was cutting up for real. <laughs> y'all talk about trapped in the closet, trapped in the basement. They went crazy. <laughs> mm. You gotta fight a battle on your own home ground. That's crazy. That's... The whole city is a transmutation circle. The like when they city, did that man. zoom out and then yeah. they showed the energy flowing through, I was like, damn. Ooh. It is a transmutation circle. For and what's the crazy whole though? Guy. What's crazy is on the first episode we saw um the dude, the first villain, whatever, doing that huge transmutation circle. See how we did a full circle in the end, yeah, all the way back. <laughs> That's crazy. 
That's crazy. I was like, they had to get them early. And they let Hughes found out our full metal alchemist was gonna be 20 episodes. Cause we was gonna get we was gonna get busy. But that really shows like Maze Hughes like intelligence, cause like he's one of the most fire characters too, when you think about it. Yeah. He found out mm-hmm. the secret that took everybody else episodes months. that months in the in the series when it comes to their timeline, months to figure out. He yeah. just went through the archives and was like, yo, 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 wait a minute. They had to get rid of him early. They got home. Like it, it was like it was small. Like what Antoine just said. When you take a look to see how a lot of things came like full circle, and you realize how early certain pieces were being set up, mm-hmm. but they just didn't seem as important in mm-hmm. the beginning. And then you get to the end, and I was like, "This is crazy." <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> look, <laughs> and I and I thoroughly, thoroughly, I, I feel like that's just the character I relate the most to. I thoroughly appreciate Roy's fall from grace. Yep. When he was able to get his eyes on Envy and could nobody tell him nothing. I'm killing this dude. You killed my best friend. Look, someone yep. take y'all down. If I can snap my fingers and turn up flames, hey. I'm, but it definitely made it, definitely made it realistic. Mm-hmm. I was like, there, there is no power friendship. There is no, look, None I know you. Look at me, Roy. Look at me. I know you. <laughs> None it's of not that. you. Like, I appreciate real. Reza, because Reza was like, if you're going to do it, I'm going to bust you up. I don't want you to do it. Yeah, but if, I did but like if that. You, that. But was if nice. you take your turn, I'm going to bust you up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to get you out of here. I, I'm, I, I, like, like, once he goes, you're going to. I just want to <laughs> let you know that. I appreciate <laughs> their relationships. So I appreciated it. It was nice. Yeah. It was... It, it did, I, it did turn thing, into a love thing. I always questioned it. I still don't know yeah. if it's there, but it was that nice. Was, it, that it's was kind of there, but it's like it, a respect thing. Your daddy was yeah, like my teacher. teacher yeah, it's it's and like they might by it. default get together later, but it's like uh, it yeah. leaves it open ended. Like are, yeah. are they just like their bond is just like really strong to where if it tipped over into romanticism, and they didn't make her be they mad didn't about make it. Her, her character only there for Roy Mustang. She she was about her business. Exactly, like, I like that. I like that. It's basically what we wanted Aaron and Mikasa to be. Like <laughs> what we wanted them to be. Y'all just went straight romantics. And then it was yeah. like, okay, it didn't have to be like this. Yeah. Like you, you like you could have done this to where you the bond is so strong that if y'all did it, we wouldn't be mad. But the fact that you never, you know, tipped that cup over, mm-hmm. that's fine. They just we really just, good for, we just they just really good friends. We just seen you kissing his skull and him. Oh, don't, don't remind me. Don't, 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 I hope she doesn't get a new guy. I'm going to be miserable in hell. Don't, that was so. Yeah. Uh, Thumbs down on that. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. By the way. <laughs> Thumbs down. But no, I definitely appreciate it. Um, I appreciated that everybody just basically bordered on, you know, falling into their dark side versus you know the the balance between good and evil between everybody because even even the heroes aren't like outright good like let's talk about um olivier like at the at the end her motives were you know she was on the side of like we finna get y'all out of here but like some of the moves that she was making i was like these are those questionable type moves that you have in leadership positions or these are the actions that you have to take for like the greater good and things exactly. like that like none of these characters are like more like morally 100 percent good mm-hmm. like everybody had their moments to where they were either borderlining about to go to the dark side or they did take a couple steps where i'm giving you like the side eye like girl what's really going on right that's, now that's what happens when you have characters who actually have their own characteristics they their own exactly. person they're not just here for the storylines like she was there mm-hmm. And she really only cared about her fort. And she was doing what was necessary for her people. When and she kicked down that general, I was like, oh, yeah, she's not playing with yeah. y'all. Yeah. Look, and even and even when it came to redemption arcs, I'm glad we didn't get just too many of those either. Like, mm-hmm. Scar kind of got his redemption, and we seen Greed get his redemption. But I like how those are done. I, I'm glad that not everybody just had to be, you know, become this um, super great guy. Like, the scientist, what was his name? Tim? Or, or whatever no. who gave Marco who gave Roy his um eyes back. I'm like, yeah, you still a shitty person. You did some crazy stuff, but at the yeah. very least, you could do this to help out. I You're still like trash. They, mm-hmm. I like it that they had to work for it. Exactly. Like Marco, Marco really had to like work for it. Like he his he lost his face. Like fit like physically, 
he had to lose something to like come around and make his redemption. Mm -hmm. Scar had to like come to terms with working with the people that he hates and like Mm -hmm. understanding the bigger picture. He had to go through a lot to get to where he was. Mm -hmm. Greed had to come to the terms like stepping outside of like the Ouroboros gang and really diving into like what does that mean to be like part of the whole and listening to Ling and all of that other stuff. They had to work for that mm-hmm. they had to take they had to take steps and make decisions that they normally wouldn't have in the third episode to get to where they were mm-hmm. and and even though we get to see ling and um may's homeland i like that their their bits of culture it showed that the world was lived in because oh they're not friends their clans right. are arguing for power and like we got to the ending where ling was like i learned from you all but I like that it showed that the world is bigger than just where we are right now. Right. It's just this is the current setting for this current story. I yeah. like that they mm-hmm. had those extra elements. My favorite part of that dynamic is when um, <clears throat> I can't remember her name, but Ling's bodyguard. Lin, her, Lin, Fon, Lin Fon, I think that was her name. Yeah, and her arm got cut off, so they housing her to get better, and Lee May hops in, and they just got beef. You my mm-hmm. rival clan. I was like, she doesn't have an arm. And you're injured. Yeah. Why are we beefing right now? Y'all need Mom. to go lay down. Y'all need to go. Mm. fine. There you go. I was like, y'all need to go lay down. Like, this is crazy. And her granddad, you know, he got pissed off at her. But even at the end, I liked that that came out. Like, on that Japanese ninja samurai uh, honor mm-hmm. code thing where he was like, I'm mad at her for what she did. And she didn't protect the king. But you the one that took my granddaughter's arm. But he went crazy. Yeah. He lost, but he went crazy. He lost, yeah. and I only, and that only like increased like Fira Bradley at that point. Exactly, because like, at that point they're pulling out all the stops. That's mm-hmm. what made me like the villain group even more because once they took out Lust, everything like you like you got to pull out all the stops to, to get them done. Like mm-hmm. when they found out that. uh when gluttony, they fighting gluttony, he got the portal in his stomach. I was like, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. Glut- you hate to see gluttony coming. Oh, my God. I thought you hate to see him coming because he just want to eat people. When you find out this man got a portal in his stomach, man, yeah. Man, that's scary. That's, that's <laughs> scary shit. Like, at, if, like, when he got into that episode and they didn't even know how they was going to get out of there, I was like, see. I I thought old dudes from the past. Ling, I thought he was gonna have to die or something. That I, right. I thought they was done for. Mm, I was like, yeah. that's crazy. Look, and even and you know what? Get into um Hohenheim and um father. I yeah. like that Hohenheim's ending. We got a nice little closing to that, him dying at his wife's burial. I like that um Edward and Alphonse got to get that closing and father, the fact that he was like the first human homunculus, I'm like, bro, this has history. Like, you've been planning this out for years, just manipulating the world. And it was was crazy. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. It's that political fear. Like, all of these small little events, like, once you figure out how the war even started in uh, Ishval, that they set that whole thing up, I was like, this Mm -hmm. is, like, this is way deeper. It was a buildup. And and it's like, Mm -hmm. they've they've been putting these steps in place for a long time. And that's what that's what makes a good uh, villain group, to be honest. They not, not right. just not like doing random stuff. They appeared out of thin air, and they just we just evil, it's, <laughs> right? Or their arrogance, their arrogance was just wasn't just like oh we're just the villain group, so we're just arrogant by default. They're arrogant because they've been doing this for years. They have been setting this up for years. They have brought this up to a point to where they have political leaders. <laughs> funding them they are so air they are arrogant because their lair is in the basement and that's what i was gonna say know. their lair is in the basement like what are we talking about like Y'all even sitting on they alchemy circle like even like even as people were finding out stuff like they felt no pressure nobody felt no pressure mm-hmm. bruh and the fact that hohenheim just living through all this because he knows what's going on but he's like i can't resolve it right now I literally have to work and live years and years and years to figure out how I can resolve this until mm-hmm. I get to the right exact moment when he's like releasing those souls from the uh, from his own body into yeah. the world. I'm like, bro, you've been he been plotting for a long time. 
Like this is a war that's been that's transcended a lot of the people who are currently alive to even lifespans. Yeah. And I and I I definitely like that, you know, he got the closure and he finally got to get where he wanted because I just feel like I think he understood the magnitude. Like we just mm-hmm. can't go into this drastic. Like I have to like we like the planning has to be to a T or all of this is gonna get effed up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like we we really have to wait for the right moment. Like this is like I have to do this at this right moment or all this shit going to hell. All exactly. of it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Bro. But I definitely like the twist on the Hohenheim father thing. Cause I was like, ain't this they daddy? Yeah, and I was I've like, so that's so I was like, that's not they daddy. Right. And who is he? Right. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, he just took his form. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and that was the funny thing. For that one is nice. Yeah. And that was the funny thing because you really thought, oh, it, it, it's not cliche, but like, oh, it's going to be done, right? I was like, like, yo, oh, daddy, your daddy, your daddy is a Wow. Yeah. Like, okay, I, it's going to be a battle of father and son. Oh, no, it's just the father's body. Like, what? Yeah, because I, I always question, like, what was Hohenheim really out here doing? Like, every time we see this man, he just walking around with a suitcase. He's just he, walking. Like, he don't seem evil, but he don't seem good either. So I was, I was like, I like, can't wait weird. to see what you this man some, doing for real. You got some weird energy around you, Hohenheim. <laughs> yeah. I'm, that's why I'm saying, like, I'm side eyeing you. Like yeah, you haven't done, time. like, like you haven't done anything bad, but you haven't done anything good, good either. either. So I'm like real side, like let's keep an eye on him. <laughs> let's keep an eye on him for real. Yeah. But um, I feel like I had an additional question. And I forgot. Well, we we went through everything, how we felt about it, how we felt about the characters, the villain group, the power system. I guess my last question is, at the end of it all, did this make you wish you started Full Metal Alchemist earlier? I'll say that I'm not mad at how late. Because it like watching something that's yeah. as old as it is and seeing that it still holds up the way that it does, I'm 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 mm-hmm. ha- I'm happy for that. So I'm not mad at I- it. I think I appreciated more this age too. Like I feel like the earliest I could have, because I tried watching it. I feel like the earliest I could have watched it and appreciated it was probably in my early twenties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like watching it now, I'm able to look at the in depth story, compare it to other stories that fall flat, look at the political intrigue, which I think is beautiful, beautifully mm-hmm. done in it. I think the watching it at this age was pretty good for me. Yeah, I would agree. I think the 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 themes that they set up, like the mature themes and the aspects of like certain characters and how it all played into, especially the political stuff. Looking at it through older eyes with what we're dealing with in today makes you appreciate it more. Makes you look at it at different layers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as well. So I was like, yeah, I appreciate. I definitely. It's kind of like how when I was watching Attack on Titan, because Attack on Titan also has its level of political intrigue mm-hmm. with the way that everything is set up, and just looking at that through older eyes. I was, yeah, I'm not mad that I started it late, given I just started watching anime like four years ago. I ain't mm-hmm. mad. <laughs> I ain't mad <laughs> that it wasn't in the first round of anime. Yeah. That I watched. And and it's objectively objectively it's a 10 out of 10 show like i know people hate hearing like those types of numbers but like if you ask me what did they do wrong i can't name one thing even visually the art still holds up soundtrack fire main character fire enemies fire climax resolution introduction all fire side cast fire plot design fire world building fire the setting fitting Mm -hmm. i typically don't like those types of settings i love my fantasy setting fit everything that they were doing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you don't challenging get a lot of shows things that really just close out well they and they close out in a way that i'm like i think we said it earlier like i'm not mad that they haven't continued it on like it's it was a good ending they wrapped it they up told a full season. story mm-hmm. yeah they told their story and they went on about their business mm-hmm. <laughs> that was it <laughs> objectively 10 out of 10 the lowest i could say is 9 out of 10 in case you just really hate sci-fi but that's coming from somebody who loves fantasy Wow. Yeah, I, I would definitely give this a 10 out of 10. This was a good watch. Mm-hmm. This was a good watch. I'm not mad that I went back and watched this at all. Nope. Look, if y'all made it to this point in the episode and you only watched 15 episodes of Full Metal, go back. Keep going. Go back. Well, 
if you've only watched 15 episodes, we just gave you the biggest plot twist <laughs> out of the whole season. You might as well. You might as well wrap it up. It's, get it's, the spark. It's, it's, get the spark done. notes. <laughs> read, read the spark notes and go watch the best fight episode. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just go, just go on YouTube and watch clips and just piece what we said and what you watched and just on just pretend YouTube like you together. watched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when folks talk about it, like, yeah, I watched that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is why I said Ryan tried to be like, well, you know, no. This is why I said at the beginning, even if you watch 15 episodes, do not watch this. <laughs> do not watch this. <laughs> do not pass go. I enjoy shows even with the spoilers. I ain't gonna care. I can I, I can know everything's going on. I'm gonna enjoy it like I just watched it. And there are some people, there are some people like that. That yeah. I I'm like that. I can see a spoiler, but it'll be like I'm still gonna watch the episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretend like I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm just but there are some people who take it to heart and it ruins the experience for them. So mm. that's why I said at the beginning, like even though this came out in two thousand and nine, if you have not watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, do not pass go on this video. Do not collect your two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and and as an anime fan, for those of you who want to learn how to support the industry. Streaming does not benefit artists, whether it's music or anime. Full Metal Alchemist has a manga box set for the paper covers, the paper manga, and I'm get, I'm collecting these Full Metal editions now. They hardcover. Y'all better support these um works of art. Invest in them. Okay, Ryan. Y'all heard him. So we can get that sequel. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're doing all these reboots, so Full Metal might get a reboot in about ten to fifteen years. Look, come on now. Maybe. But that's it, y'all. We finally watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So with that all being said, I want to thank um, both you, Ron, and Antoine for joining me on another episode of the Blurred Mob Podcast. I want to thank everybody who listened or watched this episode. Whether this is your first time or 50th time checking us out, it is always appreciated. Make sure you check us out on our social media platforms to learn what else the mob is going to be up to we're on instagram at the blurred mob pod we're on twitter at the blurred mob and you can find us on facebook and tiktok at the blurred mob podcast and make sure you check out those links in the description on ways to support the mob all donations goes towards equipment and software and everything that we use to bring you guys these lovely episodes and with that all being said this is the mob checking out peace and Kaiju number eight almost fell into that category because it ain't do nothing really unique. It's mm-hmm. season one, but nothing unique came out of this. Like when you look at that formula, where did they mix up the story beat? I would agree. I, I can see it I that would, way. I I would agree with that. And I